Good morning, sixth grade students and parents of sixth grade students new to the junior high for school year 2021. I'm Shane Wright, your principal, and I wanna officially welcome you to Arlton Junior High. Got a little PowerPoint provided for you to hopefully answer some questions about what junior high is gonna be like and what you can expect. So if you'll bear with me, we'll get started. All right, once again, welcome to junior high. And uh, we'll go through our little PowerPoint today. And what can you expect? This is probably the biggest question on most sixth graders' mind. What's it gonna be like a day in the life at the junior high? So let's walk you through it. Our daily schedule looks like this. When you arrive by bus or car, our campus opens at 7.30 in the morning. And if you're arriving by car, you'll enter by the front gate by the flagpole. So upon arrival, students will either go one of two places. They'll either go to the cafeteria for breakfast, or this year they'll go into the junior high building and report to their homeroom, which is based on their first period class. Cafeteria begins serving breakfast at 7.30 a.m. Students may bring outside food or drink in for breakfast, but it must be consumed in the cafeteria prior to your going to first period class. We do ask that if you bring in any type of disposable drink cup, like a fountain drink, you're gonna to have to throw that away before you get to class. We are, however, encouraging students to bring in some type of water bottle with a screw on top. We do have a fountain station for filling water bottles. And so we're encouraging parents to reach out and maybe find your student a, a water bottle that they can carry throughout the day and fill so they don't have to use the regular drinking fountains. Our first bell rings at 7.55 in the morning with classes starting at eight o'clock. Car riders, we're gonna ask that you not be dropped off in the back of the school. I know sometimes parents, you get in a hurry and you see that back gate by the gym open and so you let your kiddos out there and it's actually creates an unsafe situation for our students because our buses exit there. And uh, we, so we frown upon you letting your kids out there, even if that gate's open, please refrain from doing that. Bus students, you'll arrive in the back, back there. And again, you'll either go to breakfast or your homeroom. Our daily schedule looks like this. Our classes are either 57 or 58 minutes long, depending on the period. And we have a four minute pass period between classes. Our lunch periods are 34 minutes long, which provides you ample time to actually eat lunch, as well as have some free time or some recreation time. We have a seven period day, which includes an academic period or plus an academic period during what we call zero period. And that zero period is our time frame from 7.30 in the morning to 7.55. So that's that arrival time. Why do we call it academic period? That's the time that we're gonna encourage you to come in, do makeup work, work on your homework. That's times that you can get extra tutorials, extra help. And then of course, as we move into academic UIL season, that's when we'll do a lot of our UIL practice. It's a non-attendance period, meaning we don't check attendance that period, but we strongly encourage students as they arrive have something to work on when you get here. Supervision of students, this is probably um, on the minds of our parents. How do we go about doing that? We can kind of put your mind at ease that with our sixth grade students, we more closely supervise those students than we do our seventh or eighth graders. And here's what I mean by that. Most of our core classes for our sixth grade students are in the same part of their building, uh, the same part of the building. They're in the back part of our building. So as the bell rings and they transition from class to class, they're not really interacting a whole lot with the upperclassmen uh, because they're pretty much in that one part of the building. A lot of times uh, their distance they traverse between classes is very minimal because they're all in the same area. The exception to that is when they go to band and they have to walk out to the band hall or they go to PE in the gym. We do have that four minute pass period and that's ample time for them to get from the farthest point on our campus 
back to our main building, which would be the band hall back to our main building. Our sixth grader schedule is a set schedule, meaning they take electives, but they all take the same electives, so they don't really have any choice their sixth grade year. So their core courses, of course, include math, science, reading, and social studies. And then their non-core or elective courses that all sixth graders take include band, PE, and health and keyboarding, with health and keyboarding being semester-long classes. Our sixth graders were real big on coaching the behaviors we expect. So within that first few weeks of school, we're coaching them in the routines of how to be good, productive junior high students. Our lunch periods, we mentioned earlier, 34 minutes long, but we do have two of them. Sixth grade and part of seventh grade go to first lunch together. And then during our second lunch, it's the other half of seventh grade with all of our eighth graders. This year we will be kind of subdividing each one of those lunches where we'll take that 34 minute period and only part of first lunch will be eating at one time while the other part will have their recreation time. And then midway through that, we'll flip those groups around. And again, that's to minimize our group size in the cafeteria. Students have the opportunity to spend part of that lunch, as we mentioned, uh, supervised by adults and have some free time. During times of inclement weather, we'll move those students into the gym so that they still get to have their recreation time. End of the day departure procedures, and this is real important for our sixth graders to understand if, if they're a bus rider, you have about three minutes is all from the last bell to the time buses depart. Uh, we do a sweep of the halls. We make sure that, that no kids are still in the halls before we radio those buses to the park, but perhaps a little different from elementary, nobody is escorting you to the bus. Nobody is, is making sure that you get on the bus. So when that last bell rings, uh, it's very important that you go to your buses and, and board. We do run two waves of buses. There'll be four that usually start at the elementary junior high campus, and then the other four start at the high school. And so we have about a three minute turnaround on those. So as that first wave leaves, high school buses come down and then we load our, our other half. Car riders are picked up in front of the building and we do ask that they remain on the lawn or sidewalks until they're picked up. We don't allow students to cross 154 for parent pickup. So once again, parents, uh, we kind of frown upon you maybe parking at the taco shop wanting to wave your, your student across because that creates an unsafe situation for us. So if they're a car rider, please come through the line uh, and pick them up in front of the building. We do recognize that sometimes we have students that stay after on Wednesdays uh, to go to Harleton Baptist Church and we escort those students to the highway and make sure that they cross safely after all buses have departed and after all parent traffic has cleared out. And that's usually somewhere around four o'clock. So we hold those students back, make sure that they're escorted across safely. All students should be picked up by four o'clock. So that's kind of our start and end time. 7.30 is, is the earliest our gate will be unlocked. And then by four o'clock, we're wanting all students to have been picked up by that time because we no longer have personnel that are required to be on duty. Now, in the event your kid gets left behind or misses the bus or got confused and was supposed to ride the bus, we're gonna make sure they get home, but by all means, try to have them picked up by four o'clock because as we get close to four o'clock, uh, we start trying to call parents if we, if we think that there's been a mix up. So uh, try your best to, to get them by four o'clock and if not, we're going we're gonna to bring them to you some way or the other. Let's talk a little bit about cell phones and electronic devices. Junior high is kind of the age where parents decide, hey, it's, it's time for my kid to have a cell phone uh, because they're out and about more and they're a little bit more responsible and uh, it's a good way for me to keep up with them. And all that's true and all that's good. And uh, we want students to, to use their cell phones responsibly. So 
what we ask at the junior high is that when they arrive at school, they put that cell phone on silent mode or vibrate or they turn it off altogether. We don't allow students to use cell phones during the school day uh, unless it's for instructional purposes at the direction of the teacher. Now, if they absolutely have to call home, if there's some type of emergency, we're going to let them call home, but we do ask that they come to the office and they can use their cell phone within the confines of the office or they can use one of our phones if they don't have a cell phone. Um, but we wanna minimize them using the cell phone during the day. What we don't want is them walking the halls using their cell phone or maybe ducking in the restroom in a private restricted area and using their cell phones and that type of thing. So please help me out with that. We do have some um, consequences in place if students are negligent about using their cell phones and those are listed there below. First offense, we confiscate the device until the end of the day. Second offense is the device is confiscated overnight. A third offense, is a $15 fee uh, to retrieve the device and, and we ask that a parent come retrieve it. Let's talk about some safety measures we have in place due to COVID-19. We're asking that everybody who's part of our campus, students, teachers, and staff, do a health pre-screen before you come to school each day. And that just means screen yourself for anything out of the ordinary that, that would be related to any type of illness. So, you know, if you're running a fever and you got a sore throat, chances are you're, you're sick. Don't come to school if you have a fever. And that goes for everybody, uh, staff and, and teachers and myself included. Uh, if you've got the sniffles and you have seasonal allergy and that's not out of the ordinary for you, then by all means, come on to school. But if you have multiple symptoms and, and it's out of the ordinary for you, or if you're running a temperature, do not come to school. Some other things we're doing, we're restructuring our school day to minimize mass gatherings in the buildings before or after school and during lunch. Uh, so we've talked about that, some of that a little bit already, how we're doing our lunches and how we now have homeroom at the beginning of the school day. Face coverings are required of all staff, students, and visitors. Uh, schools are required to meet the governor's executive order regarding face masks or face coverings as long as that order is in place. So here's some ways that count. You can use the surgical style mask that tie or fasten behind your head. You can use a neck gaiter, which is just simply a tube of fabric that slips over your head, it's worn around your neck, and it's very easy for you to slip that thing up over your mouth and nose. And that's the way I've chosen to meet the governor's executive order because these things are super comfortable to me compared to a regular surgical style mask. A third option is a clear face shield that covers the front of the head, including the nose and the mouth. We're gonna provide hand sanitizer in each classroom and encourage frequent hand washing. Our campus visitors this year are gonna be restricted to only those that are essential for school operation. So as much as I hate to say it, we, we can't allow you to eat lunch with your students this year, um, which is, you know, we, we really like for you to be able to come and go in the school, but we're, we're bound to restrict visitors to those only essential for operation. So when I ask that you not eat lunch with your student, uh, nor, will you be allowed to bring in fast food and leave it for your student? Now, if it's packaged at the beginning of the day, it's part of their lunch, the student can bring it in, but we're no longer gonna be able to accept outside food that would then we turn around and deliver to your student. Isolation of students who become ill at school. So we have a special designated place that the nurse will use in the event a student becomes ill at school and they will be isolated there away from other students until they're picked up. We're gonna have sanitation and disinfection practices uh, throughout the day for all classroom surfaces in different areas of the building. Let's talk about some ways we have fun. COVID-19 or no COVID-19, we're gonna to continue to have fun at the junior high 
because it's a very important part of what we do. So here's some things that our teachers do. Our teachers are really good about using some apps in the classroom that engage our kids. Uh, here you see some pictures of an app called Kahoot. And what it is is a trivial, trivia style app in which teachers can put in academic questions about their content and then students are able to interact with that app using either their cell phones <clears throat> or a Google Chromebook. And they actually play a trivia style game, makes it a little contest, and of course it tracks their results, gives them instant feedback. Some other things that our teachers do is provide incentives for kids. Here's reading time, cookies and reading, and we will continue to allow that to be part of our classes as much as possible uh, with our COVID-19 restrictions, uh, but of course meeting all the health and safety guidelines that we would have to do. Uh, a lot of hands-on work we can expect in sixth grade with students displaying their work. Here's some work by sixth graders that were in Miss Ebarb's math class and we see different fraction models. We'll have dress up contests in which kids get to vote on their favorite uh, teacher. Uh, we usually do these around Halloween and then again at Christmas with ugly sweater contest or outrageous Christmas costume. And so the kids really get a kick out of seeing their teachers dress up. We have incentives each semester uh, that students earn the right to participate in. And of course, we look at academic standing and we, looked at, we look at attendance standings and we look at their disciplinary standings to determine their level of participation. So at the end of semester one, we have what we call the reindeer games. And these are minute to win it style games. Here you see pictures of our dodgeball tournament that was part of those reindeer games. And then we have the minute to win it style games that students compete in as classes. So we have the sixth graders competing against seventh and eighth graders and seventh graders competing against sixth and eighth and so on. And of course, the class that has the most points or wins the most games gets the overall incentive. We do something very similar in the spring. We call it the spring fling games. And this occurs just before spring break instead of at the end of the year. End of the year it tends to be kind of hectic. So we bump this up to usually the Friday before spring break. And we do some of the same type of minute to win type games. So how can you help your child make the transition to junior high? These are probably the most important things that we try to coach or help students with as they start junior high. First and foremost is organizational skills. Students are no longer uh, in elementary, so it's a little bit more hands-off and organizational skills meaning a kid being able to keep up with their own homework, be responsible for switching classes, be responsible for transitioning from one part of the campus to the other part of the campus, sometimes unsupervised, uh, maybe from the building to the band hall or the building to the gym. And being able to do that in an organized manner is paramount to being successful in junior high. Interpersonal skills play a huge role and that is the ability to get along with other students. Uh, junior high is kind of the age where kids begin to blossom and they kind of develop different interests. And so those interpersonal skills of understanding that not everybody's like me and that's okay. Um, I'm not like everybody else and they're not like me, but I can still choose to get along with them and developing those interpersonal skills goes a long way. Homework becomes very important. Uh, your child will have homework during the, um, the junior high years, especially in our core classes. And of course, reaching out and making partners with your child's teachers and the school. So some things parents can do is pay attention to our campus Facebook page, which I'll show you the address in just a minute. Reaching out to myself or the counselor, yeah, if you have an issue, we're here to help and try to resolve issues for you and your child. And of course, being a partner with your teachers, 
many of our teachers use the Remind apps, which send out important notices, not only to the, the students, but to the parents as well. So here's some links and contacts as we wrap up uh, with important emails for myself as well as the counselor. And there you see the web address for our campus webpage and the campus Facebook. So this wraps up our PowerPoint. Once again, I want to welcome you to Harleton Junior High and I wish you a very successful year.